Um, good evening. My name is Aaron Tuckfield. I'm the chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals. The day is the 4th of March. The time is 7.01, and I'm calling this meeting to order. Before we get started, I just wanted to thank uh, our IT supervisor, Mr. Ivanowski. Um, these are fun times, and he was uh, gracious enough to come and help us set everything up, and we're underway safely. So I just want to pass along our thanks to him. Um, with that, I call the meeting to order, and uh, if you could rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you're connected to the meeting, please make sure you're on mute and follow along at home. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And uh, just as a note, I believe we have an individual uh, who, uh, in, the, in the public who needs to mute their phone. So please make sure if you're not uh, actively speaking or if it's not your item uh, that you uh, mute your Zoom client. Um, with that, we're going to move on to item three, which is the roll call. Uh, I'm going to be managing tonight's roll call uh, as I'm on site and our secretary is remote. Um, and Ms. Posey, I, I know you mentioned this last time, and I should know this from the Planning Commission, but can you please remind us on what we should be stating at the point of uh, roll call as each member uh, says yes. the name? No problem. They just need to indicate that they are attending the meeting remotely from Macomb Township, Macomb County, State of Michigan. Very good. Uh, and I'll try not to butcher it. I've managed to say it wrong all three times I've tried it. So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Uh, that being said, I'm going to call the roll. Uh, Ms. Lawson. Oh, you're going to start with me first. That's awesome. I am. Sorry, Dawn. <laughs> I am, I am uh, joining remotely. My name is Dawn Slauson. I am from Macomb Township, state of Michigan, county of Macomb. Did I say that right, Christy? You're good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, very good. Mr. Piper. Uh, yes, I am here present. Macomb Township, uh, county of Macomb, state of Michigan. Mr. DeCoster. Present. Uh, Macomb Township, County of Macomb, State of Michigan. Ms. Posey. Present, Macomb Township, Macomb County, State of Michigan. And Mr. Tuckfield is present, operating remotely from Macomb Township, County of Macomb, State of Michigan. I think I got it that time. Uh, all members are present. Uh, with that, I'm going to go to staff. We have uh, three staff members tonight um, from the township. Uh, Mr. Box, you can start out by identifying yourself and your position. Yes, Josh Box, Planning Director for Macomb Township. And Mr. Skirto? Uh, David Skirto, Planning Consultant, Carlisle Wharton Associates, representing Macomb Township. And Mr. Aloya? Benjamin Aloya, uh, Legal Counsel for Macomb Township. Very good. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate you being here. The next item on our agenda tonight is item four, which is approval of the agenda items. Uh, to note at this point that all of these uh, items have had their fees paid and the property notices have been mailed uh, if required. That being said, I would entertain a motion uh, to approve tonight's agenda. Member Steve. Posey makes a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Seconded by Slauson. Uh, uh, Ms. Posey made the motion. Mr. DeCoster seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'm going to call the roll. Ms. Posey? Yes. Foster? Yes. Ms. Slauson? Yes. Buckfield votes yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Tonight's agenda has been adopted. Next item on our agenda is item five, which is the approval of the previous meeting minutes. Is there any discussion or motions on this item? I'll make a motion to approve the meeting February 4th, 2020. Motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there any support? Support, support by Slauson. I'm going to give that one to Dawn. Uh, motion by Mr. DeCoster. Support by Ms. Slauson. And I am going to call the roll. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Piper. Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. That motion is passed and the previous meeting minutes are approved. That moves us on to item six, which is new business. We have four items tonight under new business and we're going to proceed through them uh, alphabetically. And we're gonna start with A. So this is a variance request from the zoning ordinance, uh, section 20-6.A.1. Uh, this is with regards to permanent parcel number 0818326002. Lawrence Warden is the petitioner. 
Uh, and I'm going to pass this over, I think, to Mr. Box to review this, although I'm, I'm not sure if this is going to go to Mr. Box or Mr. Skirko. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman Tuckfield. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, this is for uh, Sunny's Pools, uh, located uh, along 23 Mile, just north of 23 Mile within the township. I'm actually going to uh, share the screen here for a second uh, to walk through a little bit. Uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen at this point. Um, so the, the variance that they are seeking this evening is for uh, the size of the signage. Uh, our ordinance uh, restricts signage based on the principal building frontage. Um, and with regards to side or rear signage, um, it becomes a percentage of that principal building frontage. Um, their principal building frontage uh, would allow them uh, roughly 86 square feet of signage. Uh, they are seeking to place their sign on the side. Um, I believe due to the, the proximity and the visibility from 23 mile. Um, based on our ordinance, as you see here, uh, because they their neighboring parcel is non-residential, it would be limited to 20% of that 86 square footage, which would essentially be around 17 square foot. Uh, they are looking for an 85 square foot sign, which would be allowed on the front of the building. They're just seeking to put it on the side of the building. Um, I believe you have all of the reviews in your packet. I think from a practical standpoint, everybody is understanding uh, of why this uh, would not necessarily be an issue. Uh, I, I do believe Mr. Skirto presented in his um review uh, that he, he does fail to see uh, why there would be a hardship to allow this. Very good, thank you, Mr. Box. I believe we have a representative for the petitioner in attendance. Uh, uh, Mr. Duque, if you could identify yourself um, for the record and give any comments you might have. Yeah, this is Brian Duque with sign A Rama, Clinton Township, Michigan, 36886 Harper Avenue. Um, I think Josh uh, did a great job uh, telling us the situation. Uh, they're just having a lot of trouble getting exposure at that location. And they, they really are hoping that uh, getting the sign up on the side of the building will improve their exposure and help their business. Very good, Mr. Duque. Is there any uh, questions from the board for Mr. Box or Mr. Duque? Chairman Tuckfield, I just have a question with the petitioner. Um, are they opposed to doing a sign that would be allowed in the front of the building, on the side of the building, up to 86 square feet per the ordinance? How many square foot are we proposing now? Well, our ordinance allows on the front of a building 86 square feet which would not require, uh, from what I understand, uh, a variance. So if we allow for you to do the side of the building to the extent that you're requesting, that puts us in a situation where we're setting a precedence for other buildings. So would you be opposed? We, we do approve signage on the front of the building up to 86 square feet. I don't think anybody would be opposed to allowing that on the side of the building. Let me, uh, give me just a moment, do some math here. Ms. Posey, if I can ask a question, on, are you, are you asking if you would be opposed to putting the sign on the front of the building as opposed to the side? Is that the question? No, I'm just reducing the size that they're requesting on the side of the building. So on the review I have here, it says, uh, proposed at 85 square feet, which I believe is less than the frontage. Is that, is that what you're asking? Mm, hold on. I think she asked if we would be able, be willing to do it at the 85 square feet. And I believe that that is exactly what's proposed is 85 square feet. I apologize then. I thought it was larger than that for some reason. Hold I, I apologize to do the math real quick. No, I, be, I believe he's correct. I believe this is 85 square feet. This sign would be allowed on the front of the building as is. Um, they're just seeking to put it on the side as opposed to the front. Uh, for higher visibility due to the traffic volumes on 23 mile uh, versus the, the small roadway and that uh, their, their address. 
which I so do we have josh if you might don't mind me asking do we have a square footage that's allowed on the side of a building versus the front correct it's 20 percent of what would be allowed on the front so on the side there's what would be allowed is roughly 17 square feet okay that, I'm, i apologize the information in my email um, was a little bit confusing on that so i'm proposing that I want to know if the petitioner is willing to put the 17.5%, which is already allowed by the ordinance. He's uh, what he's requesting is a flip flop that to move the what would be allowed on the front on the side and what would be allowed on the side on the front. There's no visibility to the side street and the, the importance of it is they have the visibility, the 23 mile road. So the answer is no, then you're not willing to go with the 20% less than what's on the front of the building. Well, 17 square foot on the side of the building wouldn't be visible from 23 mile road. I believe you're correct in your assertion, Christy. I believe that that's, that is what he's saying. Okay. Any, any other questions for Mr. Box or the petitioner? I would say kind of what Chrissy was saying, maybe it's possible to put pools on the side. I don't, I don't know. I, I do tend to agree with her where she's going is it would be allowable in the front. I get your, what you're saying, the practicality of putting in the side for, for site along 23 mile. However, I just don't see a hardship. But yeah. That's just my opinion. Maybe that just pools on the side, maybe that would meet the 17 square feet. Uh, I'm not sure. But that's just... I, I would also point out that it, it is visible from 23 mile were it to be on the side because of the fact right now the lot next to them is vacant. That lot will not always be vacant. So the visibility from 23 mile will not always be there once that's developed. Any other questions for the petitioner, Mr. Box? Hearing none, I'm going to take it out to the public. If there's any members of the public who wish to speak on this request, uh, please raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine if you're on the phone or by hitting the hand if you're on the app uh, and we will give you a chance to speak. I'm gonna give you about a minute to raise your hand um, because sometimes it can be difficult. Uh, so please make sure you raise it uh, if you would like to speak. I'm not seeing any hands raised at this time. Oh, the two people that are there. And I know they know how to do it, and I know that they are probably not here for this item. Uh, so seeing none, I'm going to close the public portion. Uh, Mr. Aloya, just a question on this. Um, we've had uh, differing opinions on how we should do this. On a public portion, on a variance request, would you prefer that we have a motion to close it or is it okay for the chair to close it as, a, as an act of the chair? I think you can close it unless there's any objections to it. And without further objections, I'm closing the public portion uh, and bringing it back to the board. And thank you, Mr. Loy, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, with that being said, I did have a couple of questions for the petitioner's uh, representative. Um, not sure that these are questions that you can answer, but they are questions to me that are pertinent. Uh, Mr. Duque, I'm also the representative from the Planning Commission, and we saw this uh, property uh, in front of us uh, earlier in the year. Um, and one of the comments by the petitioner at that time, the owner who was, um, was representing himself at that particular point, uh, we were having a conversation with regarding parking spaces. And his comment at the time was, was such that he believed the principal amount of his business was coming from e-commerce and that he was not concerned about uh, parking spaces because that was, was not a significant portion of his business or was not projecting to be, which also played into his reasoning or so he said for moving from the commercial area where he'd previously been to the industrial area. So I guess my question would be, um, in this particular case, he's asking for more visibility. Is, is an expectation of business changed? Um, what, what, uh, what is different than when he was uh, proposing the original site plan that he's looking for more visibility for the signage in this location? Unfortunately, uh, I expected Kevin to be here tonight at the, uh, at the meeting to attend this to be able to answer those questions. I don't have an answer to that. 
Um, if he is not with us joining us this maybe meeting, maybe it'd be better if we tabled it until the next meeting when he could attend. Um, and I believe you have the ability to make that request. Just uh, making sure, Mr. Box, it's, it, if the petitioner asks for a tabling, is it our discretion if we table it or at the point that they ask it, we are required to table it? I don't remember. And Ben, if you could jump in on this. Um, I just want to make sure we're, we're doing this correctly. Well, if you choose to table it, there has to be a motion to table it. Right. I was going to say it has to be done by a member. It, it cannot be done. You know, yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, and and that's and and just so we're on the same page, Mr. Duque, are, are you requesting us to, to consider tabling at this time? If if you don't feel comfortable that this is something you can approve without the uh, answers to these questions, I'd feel more comfortable that we table it because I, I'm not privy to the conversations that Kevin had with you, so I I can't answer to that. Very good. I might have some other questions, but I believe that they're along the same lines of things that I would imagine that, that you might not be knowledgeable of because they're more of a more pertaining to the, to the business notion of it. Um, that being said, I would bring it back to the board. Uh, petitioner or the petitioner's representative here is indicating that he would like to uh, table this to a future meeting. Um, Mr. Duquette, would you, if, if we were to ask the board, would you be looking at the next regularly scheduled meeting? Is that what you would think, I believe? Mr. Box, do we have anything on the agenda for the, the, the April meeting? Yes, we do. I believe that the next meeting would be the first Thursday of April. Uh, is that something that you'd be open if, if the board wished to table it to them? Yes. Okay. I don't want to leave your questions unanswered, and I think it'd be better if he was present. Very good. I appreciate it, Mr. Ducat. Um, and uh, bringing it back to the board, is there any members who would like to make a motion to table this uh, to the April meeting? Chairman Tuckfield, I'll make a motion to table this to the April meeting. Support by Slauson. Motion by Ms. Posey, support by Ms. Slauson uh, to table this to the April meeting. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, I'm going to call the roll call. Uh, Ms. Posey. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Tuckfield votes yes. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. That motion passes five to nothing. Uh, that item is tabled until the April meeting. Thank you, Mr. Ducat. I appreciate I uh, appreciate your time on that. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. As well. Thank you. All right. That item has been tabled, which takes us down to item six B. Uh, this is a variance request from the zoning ordinance section ten point zero three one one E point F point three permanent parcel zero eight two two one five one zero one seven. Joe and Linda. Linda. Montalto, hopefully I'm getting the name there correct, yeah. Yeah. Uh, are, the, are the petitioners. Um, and and uh, Linda, if you could, we'll get to you in just a second. I'm going to have Josh uh, run through the staff uh, recommendations, and then I'll bring it back to you to uh, give any comments you might have. Um, Mr. Box, could you, uh, could you uh, give the staff uh, recommendations on this? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Uh, again, I'm, I'm going to be sharing my screen. I hope you guys can all see that at this time. Uh, so as you mentioned, this this is uh, they're seeking a variance for um, the location of the pool to be clo closer to their principal structure. Uh, mm -hmm. This house is uh, south of 23 Mile and west of Card. So if you see the the drawing on the screen, uh, and first of all, I guess let me clarify: uh, in the application, if you look in your packet, um, the application stated that they were seeking to put the pool seven and a half feet away from the structure. The drawing you see here is six and a half feet. I think we have confirmed it is six and a half feet that they're seeking. Um, so I, I did reach back out to all departments uh, who, who submitted the review letters. Uh, the reviews have not changed. I think they're all relatively in support of this. Uh, I, I wanna point out on the drawing here on the screen, uh, they do have, it, it's a little busy here. There's a lot of text on it and a lot of marks, but uh, they do have a 20 foot storm easement uh, in the rear of their yard, uh, which makes it uh, a little bit difficult to build on. If they actually stayed out of the storm easement and stayed 10 feet away from their house, uh, as you see the pool that they're proposing is roughly, it looks like about tw uh, 13 feet um, in, in depth away from the house uh, in total depth. Um, 
if they stayed out of the easement and stayed 10 feet away from their house, their pool would roughly be uh, three to four feet wide, uh, which is not uh, not much of a pool. Uh, so they're seeking to be six and a half feet from the house as opposed to 10, which is, is required by ordinance. Uh, it looks like they also have uh, an agreement with water and sewer um, uh, to go six feet into the uh, in storm easement or, and encroach on that. Um, that is something that I know that says on here that they have a verbal agreement with them. They would need that in writing, uh, obviously, before uh, any construction could happen. The building would not issue any permits uh, unless that, that verbal agreement was uh, documented. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Box. I appreciate it. Um, we'll take it to the petitioner. Uh, Ma'am, if you could state your name and address for the record and give any comments that you might have on this issue. Uh, Linda Montalto, 50221 Nesting Ridge Drive, Macomb, 48044. And um, I don't really, the only comment I have is like, I've lived here a long time and I've always wanted a pool and that has hindered us. But now that we want to do it, it's like, it's going to be small because of our yard being so small. So that's why we're asking for the, to be, you know, to be allowed to put it closer to the house. And we don't have kids or, you know, small kids around or anything. And I have locks on both gates and the gates tall enough. It's already in. And uh, Brandon from the pool company, he's been out a few times and he's measured everything. And so just to make sure the fence was tall enough and the, the locks and everything, which I know you guys would have to do that too, but I just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, is there any questions for Mr. Box or the petitioner from the board? Hearing none, I'm going to take it out to the public. Is there any members of the public who wish to speak in this item? If you do, please raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine on your phone or the hand on your Zoom app. And Mr. Box, I don't think we have anybody raising their hand again. The people who are on there, I think, are for different items or uh, staff. So, correct. Very good. Uh, that being said, if there's no objection, I'm going to close public portion and bring it back to the board. Is there any questions, comments, or motions? Mr. Chairman, this is Member Slauson. I motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Slauson to approve the variance request. Is there any support? I'll second that. Supported by Mr. Piper. Uh, I will then call the roll. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Piper. Yes. Uh, Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. A few votes. Yes. Uh, and I just want to note that uh, my vote was uh, due to the fact uh, that this pool was not in front of the door wall, which has been one of the standard safety concerns that we've had, and also that the drainage issue makes it a non standard lot for use of a pool location. Uh, with that, we're going to uh, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Hope the, hope the pool's in in time for warm weather. It's not too far away. Thank you. I'm actually crying. I'm so happy. Thank you all so much. <laughs> uh, we appreciate you being here. We appreciate you being a resident of the township. Uh, we're, we're all residents and we're glad to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All right. Next item is item 6C. This is a variance request from uh, several portions of the zoning orient ordinance, uh, sections 10.0704A.3.D, 10.0404A.1. Um, actually, I believe those are the only two. Um, there's multiple parcels um, coordinating here. Um, and so I'm going to call both of those out. And Mr. Box, I think, is going to walk us through some of the more specifics with them. But the two permanent parcels involved here are 08. 22200009 and 08 22 200 010. Um, and I believe, Mr. Gabshees, you, you said your name the other day, so hopefully I get it right because I have I have the advantage of history. I believe it was Mr. Daryl Gabshees is the petitioner. Um, Mr. Box, uh, if you could take us through this, I would appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Tuckfield. Um, yes, I am going to walk you through it. I'm once again going to share my screen here. Um, Hopefully you can all see that now. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, this this is uh, there are multiple variances being uh, sought this evening for this uh, petitioner. As you see on the screen, 
The end product is a residential lot uh, in the area you see in the green square. Seems simple enough. Unfortunately, it is not that simple. Anybody who uh, paid attention at the Planning Commission meeting on Tuesday probably knows that. Um, so the first item uh, that needs to be addressed is the area you see in yellow. Uh, this is the school. Uh, the school property uh, once uh, was in the place where Vesper uh, Drive and Jean Street or Jean Drive is now. It was once a much larger parcel. When the roadways were put in, uh, that parcel was never uh, separated into multiple parcels. That Even though there's three separate pieces, they're all considered one parcel at this time. So in order to create this residential uh, parcel that they're, they're trying to put together, uh, this small piece, which would be south of Vesper uh, on the south east corner of Vesper and Jean would need to be broken off. Um, that piece is currently, the, the, the entire property of the school is currently zoned AG or agriculture. So by breaking that piece off, it actually is not large enough to meet our standards uh, for an agricultural parcel. So we need a variance in order to be split off. It actually is not large enough to meet any uh, of the pieces within the township at this point uh, in, in terms of zoning. So it would need a variance uh, to be split off as an agricultural piece. Uh, the, next, the next step uh, in, in the process here, um, oops, I think I skipped a slide here. Uh, next step would be looking at the residential parcel that fronts on Card Road. Again, a small piece would need to be split off of that in order to later be merged with the other piece. Again, it's too small to be considered a residential parcel. It would need a variance to be split off. Additionally, that piece is already a uh, legal non-conforming parcel. It, it exceeds the three to one limits. So the remaining piece, even though the, by splitting this small piece off, is actually making it closer to three to one, it still violates the three to one. So the remaining piece would also need a variance because it violates three to one. Once all three of those items, assuming a variance was, would be granted, then the two smaller pieces that have been split off uh, could, could then be, as you see here, could then be merged after the AG piece is rezoned to R1. They need to be, that needs to be rezoned so they're the same zone so that they can then be combined together. Uh, the Planning Commission did conditionally uh, recommend approval of that uh, at their meeting on Tuesday. Uh, their conditioning being that all of these variances are granted. So again, the end product I think is something that everybody can get behind uh, in terms of adding a, a residential lot. The small piece that belongs to the school is really a hindrance to the school at this point. Uh, it's not property they use, but they have to maintain it. Uh, they don't really have any purpose for it. Uh, and by splitting off the back piece of this other residential lot, we can put it to good use within the township. Thank you, Mr. Box. Uh, appreciate you taking us through that. Um, and then I would take it to Mr. Gapshi, who I believe is the representative of the petitioner, or actually is the petitioner. Uh, sir, if you could state your name and address for the record and give any comments on this item that you might have. Yes, uh, my name is Daryl Gapshis, 14677 26 Mile Road, Washington Township, Michigan. Um, I believe, again, uh, this evening, Mr. Box did uh, a great job. Uh, breaking down. Um, there is a lot of steps to go through here, but I think the end product is, will be a nice residential lot in, in the community, in Macomb Township and uh, future home. Um, currently both owners, um, it is just pretty much maintenance. That's why the school was interested in, in parting with it. And also the landowner off a of card um, is on board with, um, uh, selling that back portion. He, like he said, it's just extra grass for him. Um, my goal is to combine and uh, create a nice R1 lot to fit in with the sub, you know, current, current surrounding development. 
Very good. Thank you, Mr. Gaffshis. Um, is there any questions or comments from the board for Mr. Box or the petitioner? I just have a point of information. Can we articulate what the three variances would be um, in the event there's a motion so we have that clear on the record? Yeah, so the, the first variance would be uh, to allow a agricultural parcel to exist smaller than what is currently allowed in ordinance. The second would be to allow a R1 parcel to exist that's smaller than what is allowed in the ordinance. Uh, and the last one would be to approve a residential R1 parcel that exceeds the three to one uh, ratio. Box, just as a confirmation, I think I asked you this the other night, that parcel fronting card is R1, not R1S? Correct. One quick comment. I appreciate the explanation of what was going on here because when I viewed the property, it looked like that whole piece was part of that house that fronts on card, even though there was just a fence running down there from the, the school. It, it looked like the entire parcel was all one. Very, very good thing, Mr. Piper. Just to jump back to Mr. Loya for a moment, are you are you good with the clarification on the, on the three motions? A little bit. Um, the ag parcel is is that the the uh, subject property, which is the corner piece. Is that what you're referring to, Mr. Box? Yes, that's the piece that currently belongs to the school. The school, the entire parcel, uh, even though it's in three pieces, it's all one parcel. is all zoned AG. Um, because last night the planning commission, or the other night, planning commission approved the rezoning subject to the variances. Um, should we be referring that to the subject property as an R1 at this point, conditional R1? Yes. I, I believe since it was a recommendation, wouldn't it still be agriculture and not yeah, R1? Yeah. Correct, yeah. Mr. Tuckfield. Thank you for the correction. You are correct. And I think Mr. Box's motion would be correct on. Thank you. Um, one question I also have, and I should know this from the other night, Mr. Box, but which uh, parcel ID goes to which parcel? We have, we have ending with 009 and 010. Which one's the which one's the agricultural currently? Which one's the R1? That is a good question. I might have to look that up here. It would make sense that it was. Just want to make sure we call on correctly. Yep. Okay, very good. Um, with that, I think if there's no other questions, I'm gonna take it out to the public. Um, if there's anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this request, uh, please raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine on your phone or the hand on your app. Um, if you have something to say, please, uh, when you're unmuted, state your name and address for the record um, and give any comments you might have. Mr. Box, I think we might have someone in the audience who wanted to speak. Yes, Amy, go ahead and unmute yourself and you should be able to speak. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, we can, Amy. All right, great. Uh, my name is Amy Mayer. My address is 21677 Phoenix Drive in Macomb. Um, I am speaking on behalf of my neighbors for who have gotten this public hearing notice. Some of you did hear this on Tuesday night. So I'm just gonna repeat it for um, the ones that were unable or were not at the meeting on Tuesday night. Ladies and gentlemen on the commission, thank you for your time this evening. I own one of the many residential properties off Vesper, adjacent to the property up for discussion this evening for rezoning. Please bear with me as I express my concerns this evening because I am not a public speaker, but I do need your help. I have lived in this home like many of my neighbors for over 11 years. The property that is being considered for rezoning has drain issues. If you were to drive by, you would see a large portion of this property has standing water and there's also a big drainage tube in the said proposed property. This is an important data point for you. It is important because the proposed owner of this property that is pushing for the rezoning is not only the principal of the LLC that wants to develop it, 
He is also an employee of the County Drain Commission. By no means am I accusing or implying that this individual or any member of the Township Zoning Commission is involved in any wrongdoing regarding this issue. By no means am I implying that a public employee cannot invest in land. However, given the drainage issues on this property that appear to be very severe, my neighbors and I are concerned. We are concerned that this individual's position can be used to influence the drainage on this property to not only put his property in a better position, but ultimately having a negative impact on the current adjacent neighbors to this property, including many of my neighbors down Gene Drive. I am concerned for my family, my property, my friends, my investment, and most importantly, all of our health. I know we have an ethics ordinance and I know you are all believers in it. I know that you all support transparency and my purpose this evening is to ensure that you all have visibility to all the aforementioned dynamics. Most importantly, I wanna make sure that I went on record about the current draining issues on this property. God forbid we were to have any issues with drainage in the future. I simply wanted to do my part in communicating with my elected and appointed officials of the township that I am proud to be a resident of. I wanted to note that I appreciate the professionalism of your commission and to thank you for your time this evening. And I also wanted to add that I'm also very appreciative of the questions from Tuesday night that were answered for me after I had the opportunity to speak. Very good, uh, thank you. And I did have one question for you. Um, and I know you spoke about this on Tuesday. Uh, you indicated some concern about drainage, which um, doesn't necessarily pertain to the question we have uh, at hand, but I just wanted to verify since this parcel is relatively large, the areas that you're concerned about, am I correct in understanding that they are principally west of Gene Drive? Is the, is the principal area of concern that you have? It was actually, it's actually both areas. Okay. okay, very good. I appreciate it. And, uh, and thank you for your comments this evening. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this item? Seeing none, and if there is no um, objection, I'm going to close public comment and bring it back to the board. Um, I did want to make one, one comment uh, on the record while we're here, and that is that after the Planning Commission meeting on Tuesday, I did speak to Amy uh, briefly. We did not speak of the variance request. We spoke of some general items uh, with regards to the ordinance. Uh, but typically, if I have a conversation with an applicant outside of the meeting, I'd like to disclose it. I want to just mention that uh, at this time. Um, that being said, is there any other questions uh, from the board members or uh, motions on this issue? Well, to her point, I understand that the drainage issue has nothing to do with us, but uh, I, I'd like to know before I vote on this, how that drainage issue would be addressed at, with the developer going forward with that property. Would they have to ensure that that property doesn't drain uh, to these residents? Well, I'm not a contractor, so I don't know. That no, I understand. understood. Mr. Box, if, if you could just briefly, again, it's not directly at hand, but to make sure we're, we're clear on the process. During the, during the development portion, um, water and sewer and uh, the uh, county drain commission would coordinate on, on drainage issues or requirements for this parcel that was to be developed. Is that correct? Yeah, and our, our engineering department as well. And they, they, uh, they have their rules and regulations that they go through about required drainage and, and, and in the case of development, how they, they would have to handle it. Correct. Uh, answer your question? Yeah, I, that's how I just want to make sure there's a process in place for that. There is a process. And obviously, you know, we recognize the, the residents' concern of the balance of courses, what, what we have in front of us and, and what we do not. So uh, is there any other questions or, or comments or motions from the board? Never. May I make a May I make Chairman. a comment, Mr. Tuckfield? Um, what would it be pertaining to? Uh, just to the concern about the drainage. That would be handled by the engineering department. That is a That would be a local drainage um, approval, not, not by county. Uh, it does not impact the county drain office. And also, I, I'm not aware of any drainage problems in that area. The homeowner's been there for 40 years. There's that is um, on card 
there's no issues with water issues. But anyways, that'll be handled by the engineering department. Understood. And there, yes, there, there's a, there's other places for that particular issue where that, that can be handled. And I think that it probably doesn't pertain to our, to our questions in front of us tonight. Ms. Uh, Posey, I think you had a question. Yeah, member or Mr. Chairman, um, is uh, Dave Secuto on the line tonight, this evening? I think Mr. Shudo is here, yes. Okay, so I just wanna bring out a point because we get a recommendation from an unbiased contractor that provides the ZBA and members of the board with a uh, recommendation. I would like for Mr. Secuto to, to review that recommendation on the record since the uh, public body or the public person did bring up ethic ordinance and elected officials as if there was a conflict. So I would like for him to review his recommendation as an unbiased contractor um, on this issue. Um, I think that's a good that. suggestion, Ms. Posey. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Oh, Shudo. Okay. I'm, just, I'm just saying I think it's a good suggestion. Go okay, ahead. David Skirto, planning consultant. We do recommend approval of the variances in, um, on a couple of accounts. One is it brings that parcel, small parcel of land when it's combined into a house that fits the surrounding community. Uh, it lessens a pre-existing legal non-conforming status of the house on Card Road. Uh, the, all, the other thing I'd like to bring up uh, to uh, the ZBA is since this land is owned by a school district, zoning does not pertain to it right now. Anything this school district wants to do with that property, they can do and township has no control over it. So now we're taking a piece of land and put it into a taxable um, parcel, taxable usable piece that is fits right in with the surrounding neighborhood. And that's our opinion. That's why we recommend approval. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shudo. Thank you, Ms. Posey. Any other questions or comments from the board? Uh, hearing none, I just have a couple of comments, and I, I made some similar comments with regards to the, to the item in front of the Planning Commission on Tuesday. Um, I, I feel like all three of these items uh, have um, validity. Um, there may be concerns about other portions of the process. I'm not stating whether those are, are valid or not valid, only that what's in front of us here tonight, I think, is, is as, as complicated as the overall process is. Uh, to me, the, the answer is relatively uh, straightforward. Uh, I feel that the three to one uh, lot uh, that's fronting card, it makes sense to make the nonconformity less. Um, I think having the school own a small piece of agriculture in the middle of a subdivision that they're either not going to develop or would likely develop inconsistently with the properties around them doesn't make sense. It, it's essentially acting as a small parcel. It makes sense to give the variance so that we can combine it with another portion and make it a full parcel. And, and the same logic for me would go with the uh, small split on the back of the R1, where by itself, maybe it doesn't have a practical difficulty, but it viewed in totality, making that area more conforming, I think is in the interest of the township. It's in the interest of development patterns. Uh, and I think it makes sense to do. Uh, as I said, uh, there may be other issues. There may be other concerns. I'm, I'm glad we have residents uh, paying attention and, and, and being careful. I'm, I'm sure our board is happy with that. I'm sure the petitioner is happy with that. Um, but in this particular case, I think these, these requests are, to me are, are relatively straightforward um, in, in my support of them. So that being said, I would open up the floor for any uh, motions on this issue. Um, I just ask that you remember there's three motions here um, that I would ask that you reference the, the parcel ID for the motion that you're, you're making. Remember that the parcel that's currently R1 ends with 010 and the one that's currently Agricultural is 090. And open for any motions. 009. You are correct. 009 is the agricultural, and 010 is the one that's currently R1. Thank you, Mr. Piper. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Have fun, Mr. Piper. All right. Um, make a motion to allow the agriculture parcel 08-22-200-009 once split. Allow it to be agriculturally zoned, even though it's smaller than the size. Very good. 
Very good. If you could, uh, Mr. Koster, if you could uh, give any reasons for that, I think particularly on this one, it might be good to have make sure we're stating yeah, the record. For practical difficulty, we, we talked about uh, matching the surrounding areas and neighborhood things, and that that's what we can do. Uh, agricultural parcel now that is not connected to the parcels, and in doing so, we could further combine with another parcel and create a multi. Very good. Motion by Mr. DeCoster. Uh, is there any support on the motion? Support by Slauson. Motion by Mr. DeCoster, support by Ms. Slauson. Is there any discussion on the motion? Uh, just one point of order. I think uh, that motion should be conditioned that the parcel is then uh, combined with the, with the adjacent parcel. Do we, do we need to condition it as, as well upon the Board of Trustees approving the rezoning? Yes. Also, so yes. will we do both the rezoning and the combination? Yes. Okay. Mr. And I, I, I would move to, I would have somebody move to amend his motion to include those two conditions. Coster, are you willing to, to amend your motion? Yes. Uh, as, uh, as given by Mr. Loyal? Yes. Uh, Ms. Lawson, do you still support the motion? Yes. Very good. Mr. Loyal, is that, would you believe that's sufficient for our process? Yes. Okay. Um, motion's been made and seconded, uh, made and seconded and amended and seconded. Um, and I'm going to call a roll if there's no further comments. Uh, Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Posey. Yes. Buckfield votes yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. That motion passes and that variance has been granted. Are there any motions for the second request? Uh, this will be to allow the R1 parcel 08-22-200-009 once split and condition upon uh, combining with parcel 009 and the rezoning from the Planning Commission to be a parcel R1 smaller than the allowable size. And I believe that the R11 ended with 010. So as long right. as you're good with that amendment, yeah. I think you'd said, I think you'd said 009. So just as long as that's clear. Very good. Uh, motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there support? Support by Slauson. By DeCoster, support by Ms. Slauson. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I'm going to call the roll. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Piper. Yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. Buckfield votes yes. That motion passes uh, unanimously. And we move on to the third request. Uh, this would be the uh, request for taking the parcel ending with 010 and allowing it to be um, greater than three to one ratio. Uh, is there any motions on this request? All right, I will make a motion to allow to approve the variance for parcel 08-22-200-010 to be larger than the allowable three to one ratio for an R1 property. And this is because of, uh, this will actually reduce the existing non-conforming um, size of that property as is. Um, should we condition this one as well, Mr. Loyal? Yes. Uh, yeah, and it could conditional upon the combination of the the old lot that was split in the planning commission approval. Very good. Uh, that'd be a motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there any support? Support by Slauson. Support by Slauson. Slauson, is there any discussion on the motion? No, I'm all set. Okay. I'll bring it back for a vote then, Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Buckfield votes yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. Piper. Yes. That motion passes and that variance has been granted. Uh, I believe that was all three variances granted. I uh, appreciate the public coming out. Appreciate Mr. Gapshees. Uh, I know we'll see you uh, more in other places. You got a couple more steps on this and uh, uh, thanks for being in here and, and working with the process. Thank you everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, that closes out item 6C, which moves us on to 6D. This is, um, uh, variance requests from, I believe, five different sections of the ordinances uh, from the ordinance. 10.2106.D, uh, 
10.2106 G.7, 10.0323, 10.0328, 10.0334, and 10.2106 G7. That would be for permanent parcel 0817-300015 and Odyssey, hopefully that's pronunciation, properties LLC is the petitioner. Mr. Fox, could you uh, review this for us? Yes, I'm once again going to share my screen here. I hope everyone can see that. Uh, so this locate this parcel is located uh, on the north side of 23 Mile, just west of Romeo Plank. You see it uh, outlined here, kind of shaded in in blue. This is uh, zoned industrial, uh, and the property to the north and the property to the west are both also industrial. Uh, the property to the east uh, that sits between this property and the drain is zoned residential, though there's it's vacant currently, it is zoned residential. Um, so there are a number of, of variances being uh, sought after here, as, as you mentioned, Mr. Tuckfield, um, they deal with setback requirements, um, the storage area being paved or unpaved, uh, and uh, the type of fencing uh, provided along the property uh, that is currently zoned residential. Uh, so as you see on the screen here, um, this is the, the site plan for the area. Uh, currently, if they were to follow all of the current ordinances, uh, you see the area outlined in yellow. This is what would be allowed as their storage area. Um, it's rather small uh, considering uh, the size of, of the lot overall, um, largely due to how narrow this, this parcel is uh, currently. Uh, so what they are seeking uh, with, is uh, a reduction in setbacks, the property to the west, they are, are seeking to uh, be set back uh, zero feet, so directly on the property line with their fencing for the storage area property to the north, they're seeking the same thing, zero feet. Uh, and the property to the east, rather than the 100 foot setback, they're seeking a 25 foot setback. Um, they're also seeking uh, that the required masonry wall, which is, it, it, per ordinance is, is needed any time an industrial uh, zone parcel abuts a residential parcel. Uh, they're seeking to get a variance to uh, use chain link fence as opposed to a masonry wall. Uh, and then lastly, um, they're seeking a variance for uh, the, the storage area itself being paved. Uh, they're seeking to have it be gravel as opposed to uh, being paved. Very good, Mr. Box. I appreciate it. I have to say, reading through the application, I, I was not clear on the variety of that were being uh, asked for. So that was a, a very helpful summary. And I appreciate it. Um, I believe we have two members for the petitioner or two, two representatives for the petitioner this evening. Um, if uh, whoever is going to speak on this could uh, unmute yourself, um, state your name and address for the record, record and give any comments mm -hmm. you might have. Hi there, this is Lindsay Ott appearing on behalf of Odyssey, and I also have Brandon Ott here, one of the members of Odyssey, and then Mark Ott also is another member who's on the line here, and we may all be able to answer questions you may have. For the address, it's 17625 23 Mile Road. Very good, Lindsay, and if you could just make sure that you give uh, your address, and if anybody additional speaking could, could give their address as well when they speak, I, I would appreciate it. Sure. And my firm address is 45000 River Ridge Drive, and that's in Clinton Township. Thank you. Thank you. I think what's important to note here, um, Josh, thank you very much for, for giving a great summary there, and the visual was, was certainly helpful. But what's important to note, um, I think, maybe what be it, what may be the, the biggest concern here is the residential lot that's next door to the property. But what's important to note about that is, is A, it, it's for sale, and B, it has not been developed and um, 
if you've had an opportunity to view the property there in 23 mile road, it would be very unusual probably for that lot to ever be developed as a residential property. It's more of an industrial area there. Um, there's a very few residences um, right there on 23 mile road. Additionally, even assuming that that lot was sold and used for residential purposes, um, what we're proposing here would not in any way interfere with their quiet, quiet enjoyment of their property, whether it's industrial or not. Um, what we're seeking to do is, is store, it's a tenant. Um, in there, we, we um, rehabilitated the property and made extensive repairs. And we now have a strong tenant in there who's from the west side of the state and wants to move and uh, carry on business over here. Um, which we're, we're, we're excited about, but they want to store, what they do is they, um, they essentially rent out um, different types of equipment for construction companies. So we're talking about um, construction cones and things of that nature. So that's what they want to store behind the property. But given that it's such a narrow piece, um, that's why we're very constricted as far as the ordinance goes. And also as far as the paving requirement, um, A, obviously the cost is, is one factor there, but B, um, paving it is really not an option given that they have um, certain equipment that would uh, essentially destroy the, um, the pavement if we did pave it. So that's why we're proposing doing crushed concrete that wouldn't have any dust um, and we'd be more than willing to um, maintain that in such a manner that we would never have an issue there. As far as the masonry wall goes, um, our proposal is to do the fence and then uh, within the fence have um, a certain barrier in there. In other words, you wouldn't be able to necessarily see through it if, if that's another obligation that you would like to see. Very good, thank you, Ms. Hott. Is there any questions uh, from the board uh, for Mr. Box or the petitioner? Hearing none, I'm going to take it out to the public. Uh, is there anyone from the public? I should ask Mr. Box, I believe we have um, somebody who we know is township staff. The other individual there, is this, is this our recording line? Yes, it is. There's no public members. There, there are no, there's no public observe or there's no public in the audience at the moment. So I'm taking it out to the public, but noted for the record, there is no public to uh, comments. So without further objection, I'm going to close the public portion uh, and bring it back uh, to the board. Um, Mr. Box, I just wanna make sure, and, and again, I appreciate your summary, but I just wanted to note here, I had five points that uh, they're looking to get um, variances for, because again, I, I was not clear um, from my initial read of this, what was being requested. They're requesting a zero foot setback on the west property line, a zero foot setback on the north property line, a 25 foot setback on the east property line, chain link in lieu of block along the east property line and gravel in lieu of concrete for the rear storage area. Is that accurate? Correct. Very good. Um, if this parcel was surrounded by industrial, what would the setbacks be? I believe 25 on the sides and 50 on the rear. So if, if it was surrounded by, its, by the most intensive zoning that it would blend with, it would be 50, 50 foot rear setback and 25 on each side? Correct. Good. And then uh, to Ms. Ms. Ott, um, I, I believe um, I believe you're a lawyer, so I'm, I'm sure you, you can appreciate some of the requirements that we have to pay attention to. Obviously, one of the things that we have to look for as a principal uh, concern for us is, is practical difficulty. Um, it's one of the, the, the classic tests for a ZBA. Um, I, I did not notice a, a practical difficulty on many of, the, many of these um, requests, or at least there was not one clear to me. Is there anything that you can add to that that would specifically address that standard? Yes, thank you. I, I mean, I mean, one of one of the issues here is the use of the parcel. So, with without having this, and especially with this tenant in there, we would not be able to get the best use of the parcel. Additionally, this tenant would have to move their equipment miles down the road if, if you know, if we could even um, make that happen. 
um, essentially in Shelby Township in order to store store their materials. So it's, it's simply not practical. Um, but again, because of the narrow nature of the lot, it's it's constrictive um, as, as far as what we can do there. I also pointed out in my application as well that there's there's several other properties in um, Macomb Township that have similar storage storage lots as well behind or adjacent to their their buildings as well. Um, I will assure too this will be aesthetically pleasing. This is this is not going to be an eyesore. No, and I can appreciate it. I just mentioned the uh, with the other parcels that, that you're referencing uh, for good and for bad. Uh, one of the things that I'm sure you're aware of with CDA is that. Uh, Know, from a practical difficulty standpoint, pretty much all lots are, are unique. And so we don't really have a um, precedent, if you will, that we are required to, to meet or required to consider, which it can be good and can be bad. You know, we're, we're not looking to set precedent here, but we're also not looking at precedent elsewhere. So I appreciate the comment, but uh, just to mention on that. Um, if you could, you mentioned that there was, um, there was uh, heavy equipment that would make it difficult to maintain the concrete. Can you give any details on what that might be? I'm going to have to defer to my husband on that one. <laughs> I, I, I know the Brandon at uh, 53588 Oak Grove, Shelby Township. Um, okay. and I know they do have like track, like loaders that are moving the signs and things around within their property. So that's kind of what I was concerned with. I would assume that in this particular case, it would be, it would be a rubber track, uh, not a metal track. The one I seen was rubber, but there could be other pieces of equipment in that yard at certain times that could have metal tracks on them. And I, I think, uh, I think on one of the lists I saw, there was also uh, some potentially some, some trucks and pickup truck type uh, vehicles noted. Yeah, I believe they have like five to seven vehicles that are going to be in the yard when they're not in use. All right, very good. I'm, I'm asking questions here, but is there any, any questions uh, from the board members for the petitioner? Uh, hearing none, I guess I, I just have, have a couple of comments. Um, I recognize the, the narrow nature of the property. Um, I myself have a little bit of a difficult time going this substantial with the amount of setback reduction that's that's being done. Um, I recognize you have a difficult parcel um, and I think there's some, some reasonability to that, um, but to exceed the setbacks that would be done in an industrial area where the setbacks would be as, as low relative to another parcel as, as possible seems to me um, maybe, maybe excessive to the request. Um, I also would have a concern with with the block wall, um, uh, I, I would uh, respectfully disagree with Ms. Ott and, and mention that we've seen interest in the past in that area. Um, and while I haven't seen anything recently, I have, I have nothing to tell me that we would not have interest in the future. Um, and I, I would be uncomfortable myself um, to grant something based on an assumption of non-development simply because it was not developed, nor did, was there any apparent buyer standing in front of the parcel. So I'd be a little concerned with that standard. Um, all that said, um, I know that we are in the middle of a master plan uh, review, and I guess I would ask Mr. Box and Mr. Skirto, um, have we had conversation about this parcel? Do we have any, any expected movement with it? What are, we, what are we looking at with this parcel? Well, you know, nothing has been finalized yet. Uh, we are running very low on industrial space within the township. That's one of the things we're really, really looking into. Where can we create more industrial space? Um, I have seen a, a stat released by the county that there's actually 1% uh, vacancy in industrial space countywide. So it's, this is not just uh, a Macomb Township issue. This is countywide industrial properties are, are very hot right now. So we're definitely seeking uh, with the master plan to create some more industrial space. The parcel uh, adjacent to this that's currently zoned residential is definitely one that we've discussed. It does seem that uh, the fact that that parcel is then bounded by a drain would be a much better buffer uh, between industrial and residential than just a parcel line. 
so that is something that we are looking at. Uh, again, nothing is, is finalized yet with the master plan, uh, but, but we are absolutely looking at that parcel uh, and, and have considered the possibility of suggesting it be rezoned to industrial. All right, thank, thank you, Mr. Box. Um, I, this, is, this is a difficult one to me. I'm not sure that I, I, I know, even now sitting and listening to it, what I believe is, is the correct answer. All I would say is that generally my impression is that, that perhaps the, the ask exceeds the difficulty in, in some areas. So um, with that, any questions, Mr. Coster? Yeah, I do have a couple questions, if I could. Yeah. Um, just to confirm, the construction of the wall or fence between in industrial and industrial, can, that can be chain link fence in? Correct. Or storage area. The petitioner looks like on the site plan here, they have an eight foot masonry screen wall on the east side of the property in the drawer. They have that set 25 foot off the property line. Is that the intent? That's what they're seeking. There's, well, they're seeking 25 foot off the property line and chain link as opposed to masonry wall. Uh, it's supposed, it, if they follow ordinance, it's a hundred feet off the property line and masonry wall. I, that's another thing I, I will point out uh, that, so the fence requirements are six feet high up to eight feet in height. Uh, it does look like they're proposing eight feet only on the side that abuts residential. The rest they're saying six feet. Uh, just to be clear, stacking or, or storage of anything in the storage yard cannot be taller than the fence itself. So. There's really, if, if the other fences are gonna be six feet, there's no need for the, the Eastern fence to be eight feet because you can't stack any higher than your lowest wall. So either they should all be eight feet or they should all be six feet. Max, if I can interrupt here just for a second, Mr. Coster, to follow up on that, uh, and I don't have my drawing pulled up all the way in front of me. Is, is the fence proposed 25 feet from the lot line? Is that accurate? Or is it proposed on the lot? On the eastern side, they're proposing it 25 feet off the line. Do we require the separation wall between zonings on the lot line? Or do we only require it buffering the uses anywhere between the uses? Say that again. Don't we require the buffering wall between uses on the lot line? Am I, am I incorrect on that? I don't believe in, in this case between these two uh, uses. I don't know, Dave Skirto, if, if you have another thought on that. This is the, uh, the storage yard. So it's really not a building going back there. So we're following uh, what screening is for storage yard. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't it be? I know what you're saying. Wouldn't it be storage uh, screening wall between the two uses though? Like, it, so take for example, some of the industrial buildings that are back along there, they have a wall all the way along the back lot line, not necessarily next to the storage yard or the building. It's just it's screening an M1 from an R1. So, and I just want to make sure I'm, I'm clear because it feels like we would also, in order to file a plan, if that's what the plan says, we'd also have to give a variance potentially for a, a screen wall not being along the entire property line in some way. No, that's a good question. I don't have an answer because right now the way the ordinance is set up, they talk about screening or an outdoor storage facility, mm -hmm. and that's what this review followed. And it's, it was, I it was looking look at that. Correct. Right, so, so we would yeah. require even for not even for buffering between the zones for a storage yard, we would require the screen wall. Okay. And one further question. So. The setbacks, traditional setbacks, we think are for building in below 25. Yes. So even for a storage yard, our ordinance requires a 100 foot setback. For storage yard, it exceeds 1,000 square feet. And on top of this, they still, we still haven't gone through the special land use and site plan approval process yet. Uh, this is kind of preceding that process. We still have to go through that process too. Sure. But yeah, this is because it's an outdoor storage yard exceeding 1,000 square feet. So would we, if we were to approve any type of setback relaxation, would that also, is it just for storage yards? Are we just approving it for storage? Or but right now, what's in front of you is a variance for a storage yard. If a building went back there or anything else, it's a whole new case. If it becomes planning commission and possibly CBA, but that's a whole other animal at that time. Very good. And, and if I could, just to follow up and thank Mr. Kusser for 
long to insert my question there. Uh, to the petitioner, and again, I, I apologize, I don't have the drawing in front of me. Are you proposing only a wall around the storage area or, or would you, or are you anticipating some further separation between the M, current M1 and current R1 zones here? I, I believe it's, Mark, can you, can you unmute and uh, can answer that question? Because I, I believe based on how I reviewed it, but Mark will probably be able to elaborate is that it's, it's an enclosure around this, this storage yard only. Yeah. Yeah. This is Brian and I'm going to come in here. The wall goes the full length of the storage yard only on the side that's residential. And the rest of its fence. So the wall goes from the building, extends from the building all the way to the back property on the residential side. Does that make sense? I believe so, yes. All right. I think that's I think that's all the questions I have. The, well, the only thing I would note is it, it, it does make a difference to me thinking about it as, as you brought up, Mr. DeCoster, the difference between a setback for a building and a setback for a storage yard. Um, and I think that's, I think that to me, that's critical importance in judging the, the, the need for practical difficulty and the, the extent that they might push it in this case. So, any questions or comments or motions at this point? Someone does make a motion, I'm assuming they take this one by one. I would think so. And I have them so we can review. I have five requests uh, to have zero foot setback on the west for a uh, outdoor enclosure, zero foot setback to the north for an outdoor enclosure, 25 set foot setback to the east for an outdoor enclosure, to use chain link instead of block where the enclosure um, faces a residential zone and to use gravel instead of concrete within the uh, storage area. As a point of clarification, Mr. Tuckfield, looking at the uh, re the report by Carlisle Workman, it, there's a comment here that said that uh, there's a request for gravel, uh, but a variance for that, but none is required. I'm not sure what he meant by that. Yeah, and Mr. Skirno can, can address that, but I, I believe there was uh, later information that, that changed that. Go, go ahead, sorry, go ahead, Mr. Skirno. Yeah, right address. now, the way the zoning ordinance is set up, it talks about off-street parking areas and being paved. It talks about storage areas, but the ordinance is silent on whether it needs to be paved or not. Um, that's an item that the interpretation that the ZBA is empowered to look at and part of your deliberation. Um, talking with the engineer, we found out is in, engineer our requirement is, is everything mostly rubber tire or soft areas, they would consider that off street parking and they would prefer it to be paid. Um, there is one example in the township recently that was allowed to go unpaid and that's because they had heavy, really heavy equipment with track vehicles and they thought the pavement would just get chewed up right away because they're looking at dozers and things like that with steel treads. So at that point, it was another uh, use in the general area that we allowed that to go on pain. It took other precautions with the uh, gravel and keeping the dust down. And I believe in that case, Mr. Skirto, correct me if I'm wrong, those were metal tracked off-road vehicles yeah. or off-road equipment and not rubber tired on-road equipment. Yeah, they weren't rubber tired on-road and they were very heavy equipment to it. That's why they made that one distinction in that point. Very good. Um, quick point of clarification, just to make sure. Have I opened this up to the public yet? Because I do not remember if I have or not. Yeah, there, was no public. there was no public. public. Um, there is one member of the public uh, now that has joined. So in the interests of making sure that we're um, okay here, I would just um, mention or, or ask if any members of the public did wish to make any comments on this, uh, on this item. If you do, please raise your hand uh, digitally by hitting star nine on your phone or the hand button on your app. And I'll give you, a, give you about 30 seconds here. I just want to make sure that any members of the public have come in late that they had a chance to speak on this issue. Is 
Seeing none uh, raising their hand, I'm going to, without further objection, uh, reclose the public portion um, and bring it back to the board um, for any questions or motions. Mr. Costa, thank you. And, and I'd, like, I'd like to note on there, I don't want to sound like a parent here, but in, in looking, driving by the property, it looks like they've already signed a lease and they're moved in, um, you know, which makes, make, makes some of my motions a little more difficult to solve. But um, I'm getting, I'm going to make a motion to a, allow a west side setback between industrial properties of zero feet for storage use only. And that would be a variance of what was, I think, it's I think 25 feet right here. And, and Mr. Uh, Mr. Coster, if you could uh, just uh, add any uh, reasoning for that motion. Uh, the practical difficulty we obviously talked about is the width of this property will make it very difficult to use the property with the width that it currently is. Motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there any support? I'll support that. Support by Mr. Piper. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, I will call the roll. Mr. DeCoster? Yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Ms. Posey? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. That motion passes and that variance has been granted. Are there any motions? I believe if we're gonna, if we're gonna go into motions here, I believe the next item would be the uh, request for a zero foot setback on the north side of the property. Are there any motions on this? Think there needs to be a, there needs to be a motion either way. Yes, yes, Mr. Loya. We'll, we'll talk about that in discussion for the motion, uh, Mr. Mr. Piper. Um, on on this request, it's a request for a zero foot setback, where otherwise a fifty foot setback would be. I will make a motion. Um, no worries. I want to make sure we get the motion right. If you have to, if you have to check your notes, I'd rather we, rather we did it correctly. I am going to make a motion to deny the request for a 50 foot set, uh, zero foot setback on the north end of the property where a 50 foot setback is required. And again, if you could give uh, any reasoning that you have on that issue. Well, opposite of my previous request, this, this property is quite uh, deep. It's much deeper than it is wide. I don't feel like uh, uh, there is a the setback at the north end. Is. But is there any support for the motion? I will support the denial as well. It's, it's my current but the depth was. Uh, motion by Mr. Coster, supported by Mr. Piper. Is there any discussion? You had a you had a question on the depth. Are you okay on that question? Yeah, that that's for the same reason. I thought it was pretty deep, uh, pretty deep lot, and I couldn't remember what the what was. What the exact footage was. Very good. Uh, any other discussion on that motion? If not, I will call the roll. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Field votes yes, that motion carries and that variance has been denied. The next request is with regard to the 25 foot setback on the east of the parcel. Uh, this is a request for a 25 foot setback where otherwise there would be a 100 foot setback, I believe that is accurate, uh, between an M1 and an R1 zone. Are there any motions on this request? I will make a motion to allow the variance for a 25 foot setback on the eastern side of the property where it was to the R1 residential property. And that again is because of the uh, width of this property using the setbacks and borders would allow it essentially to be used for as a future storage. Very good. Motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there any support? 
Support by Slauson. Support by Ms. Slauson. Is there any uh, uh, discussion? Hearing no discussion. Do you have anything, Mr. Foster? I, I heard you I say something mentioned about the wall, the placement of the wall, but I don't think that matters right now. But I, yes, I believe that would be a, a, a further request. Uh, very good. I'm going to call the roll, Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Ms. Lawson. Yes. Talkfield votes yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Posey. Yes. That motion has been granted uh, five nothing. Very good. The next request would be to allow for a chain link um, wall around an outside enclosure where a block would otherwise be required adjoining a residential zone. Are there any motions on this request? I will make a motion to deny the request for a chain link wall in lieu of a masonry wall where this property abuts the R1 um, zone property. And that is because I don't, I don't know if we've done it before. I know this is a unique situation, but for our ordinance, it, it, it you know, it requires masonry. Uh, I don't see a practical difficulty to allow the chain. Motion by Mr. DeCoster. Is there any support? I'll support that. Supported by Mr. Piper. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I will call the roll. Mr. DeCoster. Yes. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Posey. Yes. I feel votes yes. That motion has uh, been approved and the variance request has been denied. Uh, the last request is with regards to gravel instead of concrete um, in a storage area, uh, or gravel in lieu of concrete in a storage area. Are there any motions on this request? I'm going to make a motion to deny the request to allow gravel where paved surfaces are required for our roads. And this is because, again, um, it was noted that whether it be a practical difficulty and seeing the equipment being used, and I just don't see what it's uh, All right. Um, is there any support for Mr. DeCoster's motion? I'll support it. Supported by Mr. Piper, is there any discussion? I do have one comment on this. Um, I think I understand uh, where you're where you're going with this, Mr. DeCoster. My only comment would be um, that I could potentially see some point of compromise, seeing as there is a pad of concrete uh, on the parcel that perhaps maybe they, they might be able to utilize some sort of combination area in the future or have some different requests that would allow them to have concrete to store the vehicles, uh, but then gravel for the storage of the, the equipment and, and other supplies. Um, I don't believe that is the request that is in front of us, so I don't believe it would be proper to either suggest or modify it, um, but um, I believe that would be my only comments on this, so that, that perhaps there might be some other way to, to achieve this that would be in the best interest of all parties. Uh, Mr. Lloyd, did you have a comment there? I just saw you. It looked like you had raised your hand. I wasn't sure if you needed to say something. No, only that, you know, there'll be a site plan review and that, that may ferret out in the site plan process through uh, review comments and recommendations of the engineering department. And, and I'm, I know we have potentially, I believe we have a special land use request and maybe that's something that could be, that could be handled at that time, perhaps without a variance request. I'm not sure how that would, how that would work out. Very good. Uh, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. DeCoster, supported by Mr. Piper. Um, is there any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none, I'm going to call the roll. Mr. DeCoster? Yes. Mr. Piper? Yes. Uh, Mr. Tuckfield votes yes. Ms. Posey? Yes. Ms. Lawson? Yes. Motion passes five to nothing. That variance is denied. And just to summarize here, so I make sure that I have my notes correctly, the zero foot setback on the west was approved. The zero foot setback on the north was denied. 25 foot setback on the east was approved. Chain link instead of block on the uh, uh, storage area was denied and the gravel instead of concrete uh, was denied. Um, 
Mr. Uh, Miss Ott, Mrs. Ott, Mr. Ott, I'm not sure the collection of Mr. and Mrs. there, so my apologies. For, <laughs> we appreciate no. you coming in. We know this is a difficult parcel, and, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can work together as, as good as possible on this to, to promote everyone's interests in this issue. Yeah, and, and thank you for that. I mean, obviously, the, the gravel versus concrete was, um, that that's a big one, because uh, A, the, the concrete is not going to withstand some of the equipment that's going to be brought back there and be the cost alone after we have a, a very viable tenant in here who wants to expand in Macomb County. That's, that's, that's very disappointing. Well, Ms. Uh, the only thing I mentioned, staff indicated this. Um, I believe there may be some other avenues for this, particularly going through the, the special land use. Um, and I don't want to speak for what would happen, but I would certainly be in communication with them. Um, I think there might be uh, other ways to achieve your tenants' uh, goals and still allow us uh, to maintain our ordinance uh, the way that we're expected to maintain it. So I, I appreciate yeah, we appreciate that. that. And, and I appreciate your concern as well. It's obviously uh, it's obviously a, a tricky situation to try to make sure everyone's everyone's covered in the way we should we should be doing it correctly. So yeah, absolutely. And, and thanks, Josh, uh, also for for your help with everything. We we greatly appreciate it. Of course. All right, very good. Uh, that concludes the new business for this evening. Uh, that takes us on to old business. I don't believe we have any old business this evening, um, which would take us on to item eight and public comments. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak this evening? If so, please raise your hand digitally by hitting star nine on your phone or by hitting the button on your app to show your interest in speaking. If you do wish to speak, please uh, state your name and address for the record and give any comments you might have. I'm seeing no one from the comp from the public wishing to comment, so I am going to close the public comments section and move on to item nine, ZBA member comments. Are there any uh, comments from any of the ZBA members? This is one. Go ahead, Mr. Um, I don't know. I don't think we know yet if the governor is going to allow uh, remote meeting after July or after March 31st. Um, Unfortunately, it sounds like we have an. Fortunately, it sounds like we have a April meeting. However, I will not go to attend. So I'm hoping, if possible, I will go to the public Understood. Um, and, and Mr. Lloyd, I know there's been some recent updates with regards to, to governor's updates. Do we have any news on that? Is there any any uh, any understanding of what might happen with that order? Mr. Aloy, if you want, I can interject on that for you. Um, sure. The, the, <laughs> the Board of Trustees uh, plans to uh, remain um, remote until the end of March. No in-person meetings. We will reevaluate um, after March 31st. And just to verify, Christy, when you say no in-person meetings, you're referring to the, the hybrid method where we are at now, where... Uh, board members may appear at town hall, but we are having the public join by Zoom. That's correct. Very good. So, so uh, it'll be reassessed, and I'm sure as our as our board liaison, you'll let us know uh, if there's any changes in that policy. That's correct. It would be April first, right? It would be April first. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> you know, I'll check our chairs when we get in here. Um, any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is Member Slauson. Um, yeah, I ahead. kind of caught what uh, uh, Member DeCoster was saying that he cannot attend the meeting. The meeting is April 1st, correct? That is correct. Okay. I also am just letting you know that I will not be available even remotely for that meeting. Um, okay. uh, this is something that's been planned for um, six months. So I, I will not be available even remote for that meeting. Very good. Thank you, John. Thanks for letting us know. Yes. Any other comments from members? Hearing none, and I don't have any, uh, we will move on to item 10, which is planning director's comments. Uh, and I'll just note planning directors, and obviously once Mr. Box is done, Mr. Scrudo is here, if he has any comments, uh, certainly we have time for both of you, if you have any, have any comments for us this evening. Uh, well, I just wanted to clarify, uh, Mr. DeCoster, uh, you said you can't attend at Town Hall, but you can attend virtually next month? Okay. That's correct. Well, I thought the governor's order is open to the end of the month. Yeah. We, we do have, um, I believe, three items already on the agenda for next month, so we will plan to have a meeting 
uh, and plus we tabled one this evening. So um, there, there will definitely be an agenda, a, a full agenda next month. So I just wanna make sure we're gonna have a quorum, um, which only requires three of you, but if we do it, just have three, everybody has to vote the same way for anything to uh, pass. So sounds like we're gonna have four of you. So that's the only comment I had. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Box. Mr. Skirtle, anything for you this evening? Uh, no. He, Mr. Box covers it all, all the time. All right. Very good. Uh, with that, I think we're on to item 11, with it, which is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Piper. Is there support? Support by Slauson. By Slauson. So there's motion by Mr. Piper, supported by Slauson at 831 uh, to adjourn. And I will call the roll. Mr. Piper. Yes. Ms. Slauson. Yes. Posey. Yep. Garfield votes yes. Mr. Coster. Yes. Very good. At 831, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.